Hey guys, it's this major here. Um, I'm not a big YouTuber or anything. I don't really make videos about builds and guides, but I really wanted to do make this because when I was thinking to make summon summon necro, I tried to YouTube, you know, Dubransky, Mr. Lama SC, and other big YouTubers of Diablo World. No one ever did an end game niche build for summon necro. Like if you check Dabransky, he he using a Hoto and Spirit Monarch and stuff like that, so it's like quite very common. So I was struggling. I had to calculate with uh, calculators and pet damage calculators and and others to have to do this. Um, have a Act One Merc with a Fanatism Aura and then have an Iron Golem with infinite out of infinity and then I have in my hand a Hoto or, or how is it the best damage for for pets but here it is here, here are the results so let's go through them this is not a cheap build this is very niche very expensive um, if you do it online it's much easier uh, to build this um, this is single player. This is uh, offline game. Uh, no cheating. So therefore it was really hard to get all these items um, Let's start with the stats. It's quite straightforward um, We are not putting anything on strength. It's a, as you can see uh, Base value is 15. I didn't add anything on strength on dexterity. I added 145 um, to have the maximum block it's a chance to block 75% as the maximum everything else is vitality nothing into energy pretty straightforward huh? here on the skills on the summoning um, you max out skeleton mastery you max out ray skeleton and you max out golem mastery and you point you, you put one point on clay golem ray skeletal mage Blood Golem, Iron Golem, and Revive. Now, you don't have to put on Revive, therefore you don't need to put it on Race Skeleton Mage. Race Skeleton Mage are useless, like next to nothing, literally. Uh, but Revives are quite useful. If you can get some strong uh, monsters to revive, they can really speed up the runs, like Black Souls, Frenzy, Death Lords, uh, Urdars, and Venom Lords, and, and other, other uh, monsters. And then uh, on the poison tree, you max out corpse explosion. You put one point in bone armor. On curses, one point to amplify, to weaken, to terror, and decrypify. These two is just because it's their requirement for decrypify, which is really useful for bosses. And then I put one point in the invision because they are really useful against uh, ranged monsters. And the rest of the points are going to the summer resist so our iron golem wouldn't die that easily and same for the for the skellies all right for the items on the main hand i have a beast rinward in berserker x this is just in an ethereal berserker x because that was that was that was i had in the inventory I didn't have any other five socket uh, X because you can use X and, and hammers or something like that. And it's in ethereal because again I don't intend to use this weapon on any other melee characters, and so I don't care if it's ethereal or not. And it has lighter strength requirements, so I put it in. As you can see, it got got a decent roll. It's 261 enhanced damage, which I don't care at all. And it gives 31 to strength, which is not bad. It's from 25 to 40. So it's not good, but could be better. But could be worse, sorry. On the shield, I have a homunculus. This helped tremendously to get the max block. And it gives 2 to curses, 2 to necromancer, energy, or resistance, mana. So it's all a very good uh, shield. But now you can see that we lack of FCR. Uh, neither the beast nor the homunculus gives FCR, but we do need 75 to hit the breakpoint. The best would be 125, but with these items, it's impossible. On the armor slot, I have an Enigma. Now, as I said, this is not a, not a budget build, but I 
do give alternatives so for beast you can use a hotto for homunculus you can use spirit word and others for enigma there's not really an alternative you must have an enigma for this build to be as efficient as possible now um since the 2.3 patch uh, on the 2r um you can at least now if you use other something other than enigma you cannot run away from the summons so that's good you know before if you casted summons and you run too far um they didn't follow you they disappeared so that wasn't cool but now they do follow you so you had at least that but you do need an enigma for it and on the gloves i have uh triangles claws of cr gold res plus two two, two curses ring one is an soj um i don't need to explain arachnid again best in slot skill fcr i have a raven frost for cannot be frozen which is not really necessary but i thought that plus 20 dex is is awesome plus cold absorb mana which is really good on war traveler it could be another i probably will switch to sandstorm track if i miss fhr but um we're doing holy grail and every magic find is welcome and uh so i'm using water on the amulet i have a plus two necromancer 15 fcr plus two to strength 20 mana uh amulet it's not the best could be much better but i crafted like a 2000 amulet and this was far the best out of them so you know i am using it uh it's enough for me to pump it up for 75 fcr which is the most important and i mean you still have two necromancer skills so it's not bad it's not bad but uh this is i really like um this circlet could be better obviously it has some wasted mods but i mean it has two uh, plus two, two two summoning skills plus 20 fcr 29 strength and uh around 20 uh lighting res and uh i armed it so it now it uh, it gives 15 rs as well I mean, it, it has 55% enhanced defense, uh, mana leech, which I don't need, so it could be better. And I uh, would appreciate if it gives uh, life or, or RS, but it was very hard to find. I mean, it took me two years to find the circlet, which I'm actually using, so I'm happy for that. The inventory are quite random. I have, I think, uh, yeah, just only two skillers. That's all I found so far. And some variety of charms. I have a torch and any, of course. And on the second hand, I have a CTA and uh, an ethereal monarch because I don't have enough strength to wear a non ethereal. But it doesn't matter, it's only for bow. Now, um, for the gameplay, it's quite uh, straightforward. You want to do skellies and you want to kill everyone possible. So. Let's make some skellies. This is the best place to make skellies because you don't need to wait your mark to kill them. I'm missing one. There you go. So... I need to say that this build is very effective and very, very fun to play. But if you want to run one area specifically, there are better builds to do so. So, for example, if you want to run only pit, then a lightning sork, a pit zerker, or a PS poison nova uh, necromancer would be better. Um, for only for bear running, a fury, a lightning free Amazon, a lightning shorts would be better and faster. Let's buy some mana points. But if you want something which is capable of doing anything in the game with a quite decent speed, then this build will will make you happy. Because as I will demonstrate, it is not the fastest by all means, but it can go through on anything. All right, this is player's one. Okay, <laughs> so yeah, if you play on Battle.net, 
all you have is players one, then this is how fast it is. But you don't usually play in players one in single player, so let's pump it up to player eight. These monsters will be still players one, but the new ones will be player eight. Now, one thing I really miss or I feel sorry for in this build is mana. I do have 700 mana which is quite a lot but I'm burning it so fast with corpse explosion and revive it's just I'm burning it so fast Careful. We got max block, but these guys are not kidding. So these are now in players eight. And you can see it's it's fine. Now, my Merc does most of the damage, I forgot to show you, uh, oh, I don't want to die, you die, see it's in player Z, it's not the fastest, but it, it gets you there, also I didn't mention, let me change this to player 3 because this is not really the best boss killer build out there especially because Diablo loves to attack me instead of my things so I'm just running around and killing him come on Merc don't follow me there you go. And I forgot to say my iron golem. He's made out uh, made out of pride, Brinbird. For the concentration hour. I show you the pride Brinbird, you see? He's in ethereal mode. So it gives a uh, level twenty concentration hour. But it doesn't matter because if you throw it on the ground and you cast an iron golem out of it. It's gonna use 20 anyway, so it doesn't matter if it's a 16 hour or 20 hour. Also, it doesn't matter if you boost yourself up with summon uh, plus two summon skills, like if you put nine summon skillers in, and then you put plus two three amulet, plus two three um, circlet and stuff like that, and you go for a skill shrine, and then you cast your iron golem, because it doesn't matter because if you leave those items later in the inventory so you don't use nine skillers you don't use the magic amulet and the circlet and obviously you don't have a skill shrine all the time on your head then it doesn't matter because when you cast your iron golem and you leave the game and then you enter the next game the game always creates your iron golem based on the skill level you actually have on your character so if i leave and then I rejoin my iron golem is recasted so he's not basically coming with me he disappears in the last game and then the game recast them him from the same item but with the, my skill set so if I have uh, how much I have on it I have plus to 16 kills on him if I join a new game he's gonna be level 17 it, it doesn't matter if I casted him when it was level 35. It doesn't matter. He's gonna be always like this. Not in town. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. It was, as I said, not a professional video by any, all means. I just wanted to show you how did I build my Necromancer. If you want to see more uh, online play, if you want to see how I play with this, um, I usually, usually stream it on Twitch. 
and I hope uh, you like this video and I hope it was helping you in any way. See you guys.